A very warm welcome to this online service for Ascension Day. 40 days after Easter and we arrive at Ascension Day, a holy day of obligation. Why are we obliged to celebrate this holy day? So that God's acts in history are remembered and talked about through every generation. So we start with an opening response. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we sing together. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule, we hear the story of his parting according to Luke. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands he blessed them. 
While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I was reminded the other day of how in the past I had celebrated Ascension Day, how we would ascend the church tower up the hundred and thirty or so winding steps to the top and then climb through the little door and onto the roof. With words and music on paper rather than in a heavy hymn book, we would raise our voices in praise to God with the hymn, Hail the day that sees him rise, Alleluia. Others stood at the bottom of the tower and sang too. Then it was the journey back down and into church for an Ascension Day Eucharist. How wonderful! It was one of the best choirs, adults and juniors, attended service in the year. As we came to the Eucharistic prayer, someone would leave the church through a big wooden door and go into the adjacent church room. A different person would then return, along with the smell of cooking bacon and sausages. And then a further door opening and swapping of people would be preceded by another waft of cooking bacon. The service ended and the church emptied. Where? Into the church room for bacon, sausages, juice, tea, coffee and toast and marmalade. Yes, this was breakfast and it was still only 8am in the morning. We had climbed the tower at 6.45am before school, before work and praised God on Ascension Day. At around 8.30 the children were walked to their various schools, often with slightly damp sweatshirts where the squirty tomato ketchup had missed the plate arriving on their clothes. I was never sure how the children would be towards the end of the school day, but chat with any of them now and they will remember Ascension Day. Ascension Day brings us to the end of the Easter season in a celebratory way. As a child, I often wondered how we could celebrate Jesus leaving us. Wasn't it a sadness that Jesus had left his disciples? They had had to wave him goodbye. How could this be a good thing? At the ascension, in one sense, Christ leaves the disciples and us and is taken away into heaven. But in another sense, he is given to us and to the world in a new and more universal way. Today, heaven and earth touch just as they did when Christ came into the world as a baby. Jesus is no longer located in only one physical space, in Jerusalem or Galilee, to the exclusion of all others. He is in heaven, which is at the heart of all things now, and he is accessible to all who call upon him, and that is call for celebration. It is a fulfilment of the Annunciation words to Mary, Jesus' kingdom will never end. Jesus is with his Father in heaven, praying for us and with us. Celebration too. And Jesus knows all about being human. He knows how those disciples would have felt being left behind to do his work. As Luke recalls Jesus' words in the Acts of the Apostles, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. An impossible task for the disciples alone. But Jesus tells them to stay in Jerusalem and wait as he will send a helper, a power from on high to help them. This helper is, of course, the Holy Spirit. But that celebration is for 10 days time. What happens between now and then? The disciples had no idea how long they would need to wait or what was coming. 
Today we do. In ten days we will be celebrating Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit coming upon the disciples and the power and the strength they received to do Christ's work. What are you going to do in the ten days of waiting? The global initiative Thy Kingdom Come begins today and there is much to look at on their website. But as is now custom during this time, we are encouraged to pray for five people who are on our hearts, who we would like to come to know Christ. People who may have struggled with faith and walked away, or not been able to engage with talking about Jesus, or been unable to explore what Christ might mean to them, or not have heard of Jesus. I wonder if you can think of five people to hold before God during these ten days. Could you pray for them daily and ask God to touch their lives? Of course, we can continue to pray for them beyond the ten days. Some folk today will be praying for the people they prayed for when they first took up the challenge. All we do is hold people before God in prayer and wait for God to work in them. I hope and pray that those junior choristers, now older, will have come to know Christ in their lives and be celebrating Ascension Day in some way as they did those many years ago. I wonder how you will celebrate today. Whatever you do, happy Ascension Day to you all. May you know Christ's presence and blessing with you now and always, and may you know him as your Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have exalted your Son, Christ Jesus, to your right hand and made him the head over all things for his body, the Church. Hear us as we pray for the Church throughout the world. Make us and all your people receptive to the gifts he pours upon us, that we may use them to your glory and the building up of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, the Ancient of Days, you have given your Son all authority in heaven and on earth. Hear us as we pray for the world he came to redeem. Grant that we may know even in this time of pandemic the things that make for peace and may strive for the reconciliation of all people in his kingdom of justice and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, whose Son has promised to be with us always to the end of the age, hear us as we pray for those among whom we live and work, particularly those who do not yet know him. Grant that we may be so aware of his presence with us, that people may see his light and his love through our words and actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Redeemer, whose Son ever lives to make intercession for us, hear us as we pray for those in any kind of need. May he who has borne our infirmities strengthen and heal them, that they may find grace to help during troubled times and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, whose Son has borne our humanity into the heavenly realms and gone before us to prepare a place for us, Hear us as we remember before you those whose time on earth is over and whose life is now hidden in him with you. Make us joyful and expectant that at his coming with all his own, 
we too may go forth to meet him and share in his eternal joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect for today, Ascension Day. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As our service draws to its close, 
the closing response. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you this ascension tide and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.